Hi, I'm Kathy Thomas. Poor Company in Fullerton offers a seasonal menu of American classics, as interpreted by Chef Nick Oberlin. He's here to showcase one of his irresistible brunch dishes. Welcome, Chef. What are you making for us? Well, today we're doing our spin on Eggs Benedict. Fantastic, and you have a really special ingredient. Well, prosciutto in itself is pretty amazing, so how do we take that up a notch? We lay it out flat, we throw it in the oven, we get it nice and crispy. It's the ultimate bacon. What we're gonna start with is our breakfast potatoes to go with our Eggs Benedict. Okay. So we'll get this pan nice and hot, throw in a little bit of butter, and while that's warming up, start dicing the potatoes. Just the normal russet potato, mm -hmm. skin on. We just do a small little dice to cook faster. Mm -hmm. Now we got the butter melted. We'll start with a little bit of just thinly sliced red onion. It's got a nice flavor, a little bit of sweetness to it. Holds up, it holds up a little bit better than a shallot would. Uh -huh. um, we have just a few little tomatoes that will pop. And I like that you use different colors, little different varieties. Yeah, we, we try to bring in heirloom tomatoes whenever possible. Mm -hmm. We just give it a couple minute head start just to soften up the onions, get some of those sugars to come out, and then get the tomatoes. As you can see, they start to pop. I'll add the potatoes. And I haven't added any salt or pepper to this yet because as the potatoes go, we will add uh, soy sauce, will be our salt. Ah. And then we have a little bit of a coriander and cumin mix that adds a smoky yet bright flavor to the potatoes. What a great idea, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. So now we can see the tomatoes are starting to blister. They're starting to release their mm -hmm. juices. Make sure that we get all those potatoes nice and coated in it. I just hit it with a little bit of soy. And then cumin's pretty strong, so you don't need a lot of it. Next thing to do is break eggs. Now, some people like to put vinegar in the water. That's an excellent point. It helps keep the whites from separating. So we just swirl the water. Doesn't have to be vigorous. And then slide. That helps not only keep the egg whites tight, but it makes it a lot longer before the eggs hit the bottom of the pan. So you're not gonna stick. And about how long do you wanna poach these eggs? Usually I'm guessing it takes about two minutes. And if I'm entertaining at home, can I poach the eggs in advance and then reheat them in some simmering water? It's exactly how we do it at yeah. the restaurant when we have large parties, mm -hmm. is we pre-simmer the eggs, uh, keep them in room temperature water, and then just have simmer, simmering water. Dump them in for a minute or so. Here's our two eggs, you can see. The whites are nice and hard. The yolks mm -hmm. are still nice and soft. We'll just let them sit. I'm gonna use my clean hands and I'm just using my fingers to let the whites slide right through. It's really the best way to do it. You, you can, can use the eggshell back and <laughs> forth, back and forth. The hands are the best tool you have in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We do a mustard hollandaise sauce. Ah. So just a nice little Dijon mustard. That's the a generous amount through. of mustard there, Chef. Well, it's a mustard hollandaise, uh -huh. right? Okay. We're not gonna cheat people. I know a lot of people when they do hollandaise like to use Tabasco. I like to use something with a little less vinegar, a little bit more sweetness. And then of course, squeeze a lemon. Keep it upside down so the seeds stay in mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna turn this on probably to a medium speed to start and then end up at uh, on high once the butter gets all in there. And that's it. Your oh, hollandaise sauce is done beautiful. and ready to go. Beautiful. <laughs> I got a taste. Mm. It's really good. Really good. So now we build our plate. Toasted English muffin, our nice crispy prosciutto, the poached egg, and then we have our hollandaise sauce. Oh, it's beautiful. It's napping those eggs just to perfection. Our breakfast potatoes, and then just a little bit of parsley to give it some color. 
Chef, I gotta tell you, it just makes me hungry just <laughs> looking at it. Breakfast is served. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. Roasted red bell peppers and feta cheese make a delicious tea for appetizers. Combine them with a simple vinaigrette. It's an easy to prepare mix that can be served atop toasted baguette slices or Belgian endive. Start by roasting four red bell peppers. And I've adjusted the oven to about six to eight inches below the broiler element. And I'm gonna put them in and roast these off. And it takes about five minutes aside. Nicely charred after five minutes. I'm gonna give them a quarter of a turn and back in for another five minutes. And I'm gonna repeat that to get all four sides. These have been charred on all four sides out of the oven. Now I just want them to steam a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little foil on the top for about four or five minutes. Cool enough to handle. I'm just going to peel off the skin. And you can see that the skin comes off in big long sheets. And sometimes it's little itty bitty pieces. I'm simply going to take that stem in out and open it up and just pull off the seeds. And when I do this, I usually have a little bowl of water that I can wipe my fingers off in. Now, if you're in a big hurry and you wanna use canned or jarred, already roasted red bell peppers, you can use a seven ounce jar in this recipe and start from there. When these go, a little bit of oil, some chopped green onion. Pretty colors, huh? Uh, one big clove of garlic. Let's give it a nice tap. Take off that parchment-like peel. And then I give it another mash. And when you mash it, you pull the knife towards you, which spreads out the garlic and makes it easy to mince. A trick for getting lemon juice out of a lemon. If you just need a little bit, and I just need a little bit, I'm gonna cut off just a portion of the end, and there's very rarely any seeds in that quarter end, and some feta cheese, crumbled. I call this a jumble. On to some either some Belgian endive leaves or some toast. A red bell pepper and feta cheese jumble. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure.